Hey guys, it's your girl Victoria back to you with another review of Love and Hip Hop Miami season four, episode seven called Wrong Way. We start off with Ace and he's going to go visit lunch money in the studio. He brought somebody else with them. I don't recall what that person's name was, but they he goes over there so they could go over some beats for a new track. And <laughs> uh, the song, I don't know what the song was. The beat sounded nice. I just wanted to highlight something because, like, Ace, I guess, you know, he was feeling the beat and stuff, which is cool, whatever. But it's just, like, the way he was just, like, you could see his name move. I'm just like, hey, stop. But uh, they're going over the beat. Everything seems to be going well. Then he gets a phone call. He answers it. And I don't know. It. I guess he said it was Shayla. But I'm... I don't know if it was her or not, or if it was the kid, but you just hear somebody on the phone. They kind of sound like they were in hysterics. And I guess Ace goes to a different room, but then, of course, the lunch money and uh, the other person goes to see what's going on with him. And, and, you know, he's just explaining ever since him and Shayla had that one conversation at the garden place or wherever they was at last week. Things just haven't been right. They haven't been sleeping in the same house and whatnot. So, you know, things... Just it's not in its right place. And, you know, he's just trying to work better on his communication skills because he doesn't like where him and his wife is at. And he just wants things to get better so they can get back to where they were before. So I forgot what lunch money said, but he said something in the aspect of, you know, yeah, just just work on that. Work on them communication skills. And we're going to see if he could do that next week. I don't know. But we move on to Shayla. And she done dipped. She not even in Miami no more. She not even in the same county as Ace no more. She decided to go to Orlando to go date herself, go on a uh, self-cation with herself. You see her getting a bathing suit, a nice yellow bathing suit, a uh, nice dress, go out to dinner with herself, booze popping out. They looking nice and everything. You know? And she said, no, the producers asked her, did she tell Ace? She's like, no, I didn't tell Ace. And she says she needs to date herself, you know, with the whole woman empowerment thing. And listen, I couldn't go on a date with myself, like on a self cation. I want to go with someone, you know, because I don't know, the kind for me will be a little lonely. You know, I'm already by myself a couple of times here. I don't need to be going on vacation by myself. But for those that do, hey, kudos to you. Listen, I went, there was a couple of times that I used to go on date nights with myself. I used to go to a restaurant. Like sometimes I'm like, I'm hungry. I don't want to go pick up the food and bring it home because I know it tastes better in the restaurant. So there's a couple of times, not a lot. I think it was only like two times I could count that I went out to eat by myself. And let me tell you, uh, for me personally, ah, it's just a no. When you're going, especially I went, <laughs> one of them was I went to IHOP on a Saturday in the morning by myself and you know it's already packed so to be <laughs> waiting in line to go sit down and eat and then sitting by yourself like because I, I don't know I guess it's because of where I was sitting I was in between two big tables of families and I'm just sitting there by myself like okay it was kind of awkward but like I said kudos to her she could do it the only thing I would say Shayla is I mean I get you and your husband are in a little riffraff, but, you know, I don't think it was that big to just let him know, like, hey, listen, I'm just going to go to Orlando for a few nights to just free my mind and just do my thing, you know, just to let him know. Because for me, I ain't going to like it if, even if we in a riffraff, you better let me know where you're going. Like, especially if you're not going to be sleeping in the house that night or the next couple of I'm going to need to know where you at. So... That's the only thing I can say to Shayla. Listen, you want to go date yourself and make your booze pop and stuff in Orlando? That's fine. But at least let your husband know. I mean, towards the end of the episode, he knows where she's at. But, like, for her not to tell him, I think uh, you probably should have just told him. We move on to Sugihana. She has the meeting with uh, Jay Jelly. I know his name is Jay Kelly, but we call him Jay Jelly. And Tip Kill Bill's there. I guess, uninvited, per what Sukihana's said. So, uh, she wanted to have the meeting so they could go about who whose role is what. So, 
I guess the mom couldn't make it for whatever reason. I forgot the reason Suki Hana said, but you see Tip coming in there looking like a boss with the glasses and a black dress and everything. So as they're trying to talk and discuss everything, it seems like Kill Bill's like pretty protective about like, you know, she's the artist. We need to do this. We need to do that for her. You know, it's all about making her look good. And it seems like there were without Kill Bill's interruptions, interceptions, it seems like things were about to go good and about who's doing what. I guess the mom is the it's gonna be the manager manager. Jay Jelly is gonna be the road manager and I guess uh Tip, she's gonna be helping Suki in regards with the music in the studio and stuff like that. So it looks like without Kill Bill's interceptions, things were going good. But, of course, Kill Bill's still going off at the mouth like, yeah, because, you know, she the artist, you know, we just got to make sure we do everything right for her. You know, we're trying to bring her up, not down, you know. This, this. And Suki's just like, listen, I know that's my man and everything, but I ain't even listen to him. I'm ignoring him. I don't, I don't, I ain't trying to hear nothing he got to say, you know. Whatever. He wasn't even a vibe. I don't even know why he here. Uh, Suki, you should have told him that. You should have been like, babe, you can stay in the car. You can stay in the car. Because, listen, if you're not going to tell people what their limits and boundaries are, he, they gonna go just take it and just go wherever they want to go with it, Suki. So I mean, she told him towards the end of the episode, but uh, Suki, if you already see, listen, I know she said she's trying to ignore him, but at the same time, you probably should have just let him know, like, hey, nigga, like, we, this, no, you you could stay over here. I'm about to handle some business. Come pick me up in in about thirty forty five minutes. Have food ready for me at the house. I don't know, but I, Suki. Communication, people. That's all I... Hey, that's all... That is the moral of every episode and stuff that I review. Communication. So, we move on to Trina. She's going to do a music video shoot uh, with Jayla. I guess she's featured on one of Jayla's songs. So, at first, Corey's nowhere to be found. She's like, where's Corey? You're asking Raymond, like, where's Corey? And Raymond... You know, Trina's stressed, so now she's trying to get, starting to get Raymond a little bit stressed. And he's just like, listen, I'm just trying to stay calm, cool, collected for her. Because, you know, if she already stressed and I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm usually a calm person. If she gets me stressed, it's not going to be good. So I'm just trying to keep it cool for her. Corey comes up late. And Trina's annoyed because for the video shoot, I guess she's, she's supposed to have certain clothes, certain items and stuff. But Corey didn't relay that message or he relayed her the wrong message. So, the fact that he's late to me is just saying, nigga, you clearly giving her the wrong information. You clearly the one giving her the wrong times, making her late. If you not even showing up on time for this video show, you should be there before her. First off, or you should be with her. But if you're not, you should be there before her. You're the manager. You're supposed to be making sure everything is good and everything is set up. So, when she comes, she could, she could just get ready, get her hair did, get her makeup did, and then do the shoot. Because I feel like every... All these instances, everybody's already there, ready for her. The main, the main person of the music video is Jayla's song, and she there before Trina. If anything, well, then again, I know. Still, no. F that. Forget. It. Listen, Corey, what are you doing here? Because you shouldn't be the one that's late, running behind. You should be there, ready to go. So when. Trina comes, whether it's you coming in late or Trina be late, whatever the whatever the issue is, you need to be there before Trina. So by the time she comes, she could just sit down, get, like I said, get her makeup done, hair did, get the outfit and just do what she has to do and then go on to the next thing that she has to do. I don't understand why still, what is this, episode seven? And we, Trina, you still didn't fire them yet? Trina said she respect Corey and stuff. I don't know Corey's track record, what he done did in the past and present and what he going to do in the future. But from what he's, from what seeing what he's doing, dealing with Trina as uh, one of her co-managers, she he should have been fired a long time ago. And KD too. So, Corey brings up a festival that Trina's having for Trina Day. Obviously, it didn't happen last year because of COVID, so they're going to try to have it this year. And... Trina's talking about he don't even have a flyer out for the the Trina day and it's a week away. So do people know about it? But then again, when we go, when we move on, when we get back to it, we find out why there's no flyer because there ain't no damn venue yet. So how are you going to have a flyer without an address of where to go? 
So that's understandable. But at the same time, it's like, uh, what the f is going on here? When did you guys start planning the festival day for the Trinity? This is, okay. This is ridiculous. We're going to get into it uh, the next scene when Joy comes. But this is, this is not making no type of sense whatsoever. We move on to Amara. She's setting things up for her music video, or uh, her mu music video, uh, for the song that she done recorded her part two in the last episode or two episodes ago. I don't know. So she's saying her and Alan they're slowly drifting apart. You know they're still talking and stuff, but not as much because you know she's focusing on her music. And you know Alan probably doesn't like that because he's like, oh now she about to go out in these streets, and you know I'm not gonna be the prime. Uh, person in her eye right now is her music i'm gonna come second to her music which is understandable not saying that's what he's saying but he seems like the type of guy from what i see that's probably like no i need to be your all and er everything so so far right now it just seems they're drifting apart slowly so amara goes to go check on her mom and her mom's not really feeling good she's saying she's been feeling nauseous and dizzy so uh, Amara says she need to go see the doctor. And Amara lets us know that her mom has diabetes, thyroid problems, cholesterol, probably like high cholesterol. And she's saying they need to eat better, you know, because she's been so focused on music. She hasn't really, be, really been paying attention to what her mom's been eating and stuff. And if anything were to happen to her mom, she would feel so uh, regretful that it's her fault that she wasn't making sure her mom is on the straight and narrow. But at the same time, Amara, your mom is a grown-ass woman, so she should know that she needs to be on the straight and narrow, too. There's only so much you can do, Amara, as the person watching over her, in a sort of sense. But at the same time, she's a grown-ass woman. So if she's eating those wrong things, that's really because of her, not because of you. So here you go, Amara, going through her house with the black trash bag. Like, no, we need to eat better. We need to throw all this stuff. Like, you have diabetes. Why are you eating this? Why are you eating this? this and that no more carrot cake for you no more uh pie for apple pie and stuff why are you eating this she throws all that away and from the the containers of it i knew that was some public sweets i knew the container of the carrot cake was Publix. i knew from the apple pie that was Publix. and you're gonna throw list i understand why she did it but to me carrot cake is good it's been a you know it took a long time to me, for me to get to the point where I like carrot cake. Because at first I'm like, there's fucking carrots in here. There's literally carrots in here. It took me a while. But once, you know, as as I got older, I'm like, okay. Yo, carrot cake stays alone. It's a little bit good. You know, I ain't gonna lie. It's a little bit good. Apple pie. love apple pie. Especially when you put, when you warm it up in the microwave. And put a couple of scoops of vanilla ice cream on top. Beautiful. And I'm just seeing her throw these foods away. And I'm just like, I get it, Amara. But, like, you could have, I don't know. You could have donated that. I don't know. But I'm just like, all that good food going to waste. But I understand why she did it. She told her, she gave it to her mom. Told her to go throw it outside. You see Anna, Anna, Mama Anna going outside to throw away. Low key, if I was Mama Anna, I probably would have gotten a couple more uh, bites of the cake and the pie before I threw it away. Shoot. Because that looked like a whole uh, carrot cake bar and apple pie. So she probably had others. Like, I would have just took a few more bites or scoops, so I don't know. But anyway, she goes to go toss it out. We move on back to Joy and Tr uh, to the Trina situation. Joy comes to the rescue for Trina to do her hair, and I guess she brought clothes or something, and that aspect, the correct clothes of what she needed for the video shoot. And Trina's just like, Trina Day is a disaster. She calls KD, gets KD on the phone, the venue, and this is where we find out the venue is not even booked yet. KD's giving all these excuses. And then we also find out the vendors aren't even registered, and I'm just like, this is a week away. I don't know how many vendors she has, but like, what? This is rookie mistakes at this point. Like, Drita, I don't understand where you find these uh, managers from. You say you respect them and they must have a track record or something, but they just ain't doing it. Not like not for you. And that's the problem. We find out KD, I think Trina said this in the, probably like the first or second episode, but we find out KD, she's in Atlanta. She moved to Atlanta about a year ago, so she's co-managing Trina with Corey. But I'm just like, 
KD need a goal. Corey need a goal. KD's giving excuses. Corey gives excuses. He has no remorse for any of the shit that he do, that he does coming late and all that stuff. And blames it all on you, Trina. And I'm just like, Trina, what are we doing here? I, I can't keep talking about this with you every uh, episode. Because you too far in the game. You've been in this game for, like you said, 21 years. Two decades, Trina. Two decades. And you haven't rookie ass managers not knowing what they supposed to be doing no listen you need just like you had it last season doing the auditions for the tour you wanted to do the girls rappers tour you need to do an audition for managers because i i can't keep talking trina no this is ridiculous first off to be honest at her caliber she shouldn't even be having to worry about what's going on. She should already know things are getting done because her management team should be on point at this point. Okay? Listen, and I don't know if they doing this to you because of you, Trina, because you ain't know, like, Beyonce or something. I don't know. But because I know for damn sure if it was Beyonce, I, for in my personal opinion, I feel like they wouldn't even be doing half the shit and giving half the excuses they were. And... <laughs> because Corey just seems like a fuck, fuck boy to me fuck nigga like I don't care what you gotta say like you ain't paying me that much money but it's like at the end of the day Corey you getting paid to do this shit but you can't even do the shit right we move we're not even really moving on because the next scene I guess it might have won a commercial I don't remember but I guess to come back for commercial Trina she said she needs to drink a tequila but she even though she's high she already drinking and stuff and whatnot, and She's Trina just stressed out. They're about to do the video shoot. Corey doesn't even apologize to Trina. He just says thanks to Jayla for, you know, having them there to do what they need to do. Trina's going off on Corey. Corey's ignoring her and just like, man, I ain't trying to hear none of that. So Corey goes off to the side, makes a few phone calls. Trina is starting to do the video shoot with Jayla and all the other people that's a part of the video shoot. Joy goes to check up on Corey to talk to him for a little bit. And Corey's just like, Trina's driving him crazy, and she needs to be put under control. And Joy comes to the defense of Trina, saying, well, she's going through a lot. And she has a lot of pressure on her with her mom passing and her brother not being here for years. You know, she's still hurt and going through that. So she she got a lot going on. So and for Trina, the way she can not think about all those things that her traumatic experiences is to just work harder, which when she really just working herself to the damn ground at this point. And Corey's just like, you know, he gets that he understands that she's going through a lot, but maybe she needs to go to counseling. And Joy just said, well, Trina venting to like her family and friends and stuff. That's her therapy for Trina. And, you know, she works harder. So she doesn't have to think about her family trauma. Like I just said. So, um, I guess that was like a sentimental moment, but at the same time, at the Corey, listen, even regardless of the fact, I get that she's going through a lot. I know she she has a lot going on in her family situations, but at the same time, Corey, nigga, we all knew Trina was a hothead from start, from jump. Okay, even before her mother passed and probably even before her brother passed, we all knew Trina was a hothead. She had attitude. And if you're not willing to deal with someone like that on a daily basis as their manager, then you can't work here. You can't be here. You got to go. Can I handle that? No. This is why I don't like to deal with the uh, public. And yes, I get I'll be dealing with one person, but uh, I wouldn't even work for me either. I, I, I personally couldn't deal with it. That's why I'm not trying to go bang on Trina's uh, door. To ask to be her manager because I personally can't deal with that. Some people can. And that's why Trina needs to get the people who can deal with a person like her. And like I said, I don't, I, I just feel like Corey just trying to play Trina at this point. Because like I said, he ain't, he wouldn't do that to no Janet Jackson, to no Beyonce. So why are you doing it to Trina? You getting paid at the end of the day, she's your employer. So you need to get up to par before she replaces you. Well, she should replace you by at this point. By now, by today's date, October 5th, 2021, I hope you're not her manager no more. Unless if you bout your shit and you doing what you need to do, you I hope you're not her manager no more because it makes no sense for someone 
in this business for 21 years to be having rookie ass managers. Even Suki has somewhat of better management than you, Trina. This is that's ridiculous. So we move on to Amara. She takes her mom to the doctor. Her mom's shaking and feeling worse. She's uh her head hurts, her back hurts, her chest hurts. And we find out her mom's not taking her medications. And I'm just like, Mama, why are we not taking our medications? Why? You, you're doing all this stuff. You're going back and forth. Why are we not taking our medications, Mama Anna? No. And that annoys me. Like, I don't take daily medication like that. But if I have to, I would. I don't know. Then again, I have OCD. So I just know, like, okay, I got to do, do what I got to do. But... I, I do not understand people who just willingly don't take their medication. Who have it there. It's one thing if you run out of your medications. And it's another thing if you, okay, you slip up and you forget your medication like once in a blue moon. But to like have the conscious thought like, no, nah, I'm not going to take it no more. I don't need it. When you know you eating all them carrot cakes and apple pies. And Girl, take a medication. Okay, because sometimes I have to be telling my dad too. Because my dad's diabetic as well. And sometimes he just... You just be like, oh, I don't need to take it. But you eating friggin' vanilla ice cream in the freezer. Come on now. Like, no. You know you're not eating good. You might as well take your medication. At the least. If you're going to be eating all this type of shit, at least take the medication. At least, please. But anywho, she's laying down. You see her shaking and stuff. And, you know, the doctor's telling her, like, and I was like, well, you need to tell her, like, what can happen if she doesn't stop what she's doing the doctor's like well, you can die so amara goes out with the doctor to you know talk to him and i guess amara says she's just been so stressed first off before we even get to that you're gonna go talk with a doctor listen if you're gonna consult the doctor too maybe it's just because of tv but if you're gonna consult the doctor you need to go sign in to check in so you can have a visit with a doctor but anyway amara's been so stressed excuse me and she hasn't had her period in three weeks, and she doesn't know if it's because of stress or if she could be pregnant. Uh, she hasn't seen Alan in, like, five weeks. So, technically, if she was pregnant, excuse me, then it would make sense. The timing would add up, and she doesn't know how she would feel if she's pregnant and how she would tell her mom. And, you know, her mom, you know her mom not going to like that, especially if, I'm, if her mom is pregnant with a nigga like Alan or if Amara's pregnant by Alan you know the mom is not gonna like that you know the mom gonna be like look look you played yourself you played yourself so I don't know how Amara feels she just said she knows her mom not gonna really be too happy about it but are you gonna be happy about it Amara cause if you are then I guess but um you don't even know if this is gonna be your husband okay you uh, Amara Listen, unless if you want to get pregnant or trying to get pregnant, why are we having sex unprotected? I don't understand this. Why is this still uh, an issue with people? Like, unless if you want to get pregnant or kind of like, uh, we're not trying, but we're not stopping it either. Uh, why are we doing unprotected sex? Why are we, do, why are we raw dogging it? Like I said, so I don't know how Mar feels, but I guess we'll find out once the results come. I don't know. So we get to Ace. He has a sit down with his mom and his sister. I don't It's his sister's name, Shayla, too. I don't remember. But he sits down with them to, to talk. And Blondie, which is his mama, she said she said she doesn't want to put Ace in the middle between of her and Shayla. But Shayla had an attitude with her on the Mother's Day brunch. And <laughs> listen, I may not like Blondie in some moments, but she is funny. So she's just like, listen, she had an attitude with me. Okay. She didn't even look at my face. She didn't even look at my face. She just looked, she just she ignored me and just walked off. And then we get the flashback at the Mother's Day brunch of, I guess they were serving the moms, like Shayla and her dad was serving the moms. And you can see her head was down the whole time that Blondie first came up and Shayla's just like, oh, I gotta go check on the food or whatever. And just literally she did walk past the Blondie. Now, I appreciate Ace came to the defense of his wife. I appreciate, I get that Ace. Kudos to you that, listen, you know, y'all know how I feel about Blondie. 
she a bitch that she a bitch i'm sorry i know i can already hear one person talking about oh don't call his mama bitch. she a bitch sorry she a bitch but because i have haitian parents i can understand why she would be upset that she was not acknowledged when she walked in especially if it's a mother's day brunch in the Haitian community, in the Haitian culture, anytime you go somewhere, when you see adults and stuff, you got to acknowledge them all. You got to say, hi, hello, how are you, all that stuff. Liz, I can understand Shayla was not in the mood. She, you know, just getting through the loss of her and Ace's child. And her and Blondie don't even really get along like that. They be having kind of riffraffs and stuff. I get it. But in Blondie's perspective, you're going to have to respect me. You're going to have to at least say hi and acknowledge me, especially on Mother, Mother's Day brunch. And even Ace said he respected his mom's feelings about that. And for me, I'm just like, even if I had a refer, you know, thank God, like I said, thank God me and my mother-in-law, we are good. You know, there may be a little bit of a language barrier, but we are good. If in the case... I wasn't really too cool with the mom-in-law. I'm willingly going to this Mother's Day brunch too. Because if I really felt that the way that Shayla felt, I shouldn't ha have even went there. She shouldn't have even went. But if you're going to go there, at least just be like, hey, how you doing? How's everything? Happy Mother's Day. Something. Just leave it at that. You don't even have to get into it. Just acknowledge her and just say hi. So I can understand in that aspect as a, you know, for someone that's probably older generation like Blondie is and the way the Haitian people is, my, my Haitian peoples, my parents and families. Listen, I was just always growing up to, listen, when you walk in a room or whether you walk in a room or someone walks in a room, they're old, they're, they're your elder and stuff. Listen, just be like, hello, how you doing? Just as courtesy. But I guess, you know, I also understand. <laughs> Listen, I'm tripping over my words. I also understand somewhat of Shayla. Like, Listen, we ain't cool. I ain't going to say hi to her for what. But, under, okay. I, I don't know how to justify this. But I just wouldn't have done it. So, I understand Shayla's feelings. But it just wouldn't be me. But, like I said, I appreciate that Ace came to his wife's defense. So, I guess because of the fact that he came to his wife, his wife's defense, Blondie got a little upset. And she's like, you know what, I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't trying to make no peace. I ain't trying to make no peace with that, you know. you know. And she, you know, she just disagrees. So, like I said, Ace said he respects his mother's feelings. But him, he disagrees with how she's acting and how she feels about it. And this is when Blondie starts crying. And at first I'm like, okay, is this going to be like, the Mendici's mom situation, like the Scrappy's mom situation. But no, it was, for me, I felt legit tears. And she's just like, she doesn't think anyone knows her pain or what she's gone through, you know, it's because she don't cry. People just think, oh, she's good and she's just funny or she just has the attitude and stuff. But she's like, but she's been through a lot. And in this scene, Ace and his sister are just trying to explain to her, like, okay, we get that. But also, no, like, at the end of the day, they didn't say this word for it. I'm just paraphrasing. They grown-ass kids, too. They, they grown-ass as her kids, they're grown ass people, okay, and they now they have their own lives, and they can have the backbone to tell their mom, "Hey, no, you're wrong. No, this is what it is. These are these are the boundaries. It's not just about you. It's not just about what you feel and what you think, okay. Other people have opinions too. Whereas back in the day, they couldn't even talk back to her. Not even really talk back, but just voice their opinions because if they did, they was gonna get slapped in the mouth. And now they're not little kids anymore, so they can tell her without getting slapped in the mouth." mouth by her but i don't know if blondie's understanding where they're coming from uh i think she just needs to realize her kids are not kids no more they're grown-ass people with their own minds and they can say what they say and if she don't like it she don't have to like it but she just needs to respect that's the way they feel and that's how it's gonna be so obviously uh a said at least her crying is the start for everything to uh what did he say the first part of the healing blondie doesn't feel like that but i'm just like blondie you just got a very tough chip on your shoulder i don't know how it's gonna be broken off but girl you need some healing you need some healing you need to go talk to somebody and that's not even saying in a bad way but just in a way for like 
at least someone could hear you out and let, you know, give their advice. But I guess, I feel like Blondie's the type of person, if you tell her something she don't want to hear, she she don't want, you know, it's going to be false. It's going to be fake news. So, I don't know, man. But the fact that she's crying, I feel like we can get somewhere. She's not someone that's completely shut off to change. It's just going to take a little bit more time than someone else for her to change, to come to understanding. But I feel like her and Shayla could get to a point where they're good one day. Hopefully, they're just going to have to sit down and actually just discuss it, discuss it and hash it out without either side getting too offended, I guess. But we're going to see if that happens this season. I don't know. We move on to Amara. She's st- uh, still setting up her music video. I don't know who she was on the phone with, but they, the person on the phone was like, you know, you know my my time is valuable. Bitch, get the out of here. Listen, Amara probably gonna still book them anyway, but I'm just like, because even Amara was just like, I know that. I don't know who you are. So maybe your val- your time is valuable, but I don't know. It just sounded too cocky for me. I don't like dealing with cocky people because I'm just like, humble yourself real quick before God humbles it for you. Anywho, Amara goes checks on her mom. Her mom's cleaning and I was like no you need to go sit down and rest the doctor told you to sit down and rest so that's what you need to do so I guess the mom goes sits down on the couch and rest Amara goes to talk with the dad and it's just like she appreciates him for helping out you know thus far but she's gonna need more help from him because you know she might be pregnant the dad seems happy Mara's just like no shh don't but don't be talking too much because I you know I ain't trying to have the mom you know her mom know about it right now but she needs his help more in the house around the house and he's just like well i'm about to go back to dr you know i got already got my own little place set up over there and i just you know i'm about to go over there and do my thing so mars was sad she's just like her dad's leaving her again and she still loves him but she just wish she didn't love him as much as she does because it wouldn't hurt as bad but this is what he always does so she there's nothing else she can do about it and i'm just like listen your dad is a grown-ass man tomorrow I get it. You feel like he's abandoning you again. As long as he keeps in contact with you, I don't see a problem with it. Because at the end of the day, he ain't married to Anna. Okay? They got a little riffraff. You know, the mama already tried to throw a vase at his head. So, he's like, I ain't really trying to stay here that much longer. And plus, it's like, I'm staying at a house with my daughter and my ex-wife. If they was married. I think they were married. But my daughter and my baby mama, like, you know, listen. As unattractive to the eye as he is. You know, he was on TV, okay? At this point, he was on TV, you know? He trying to go to the DR be like, yeah, you know, my daughter is in America. You know, she she making money, you know? I was on TV, you know? I was on American TV. He trying to get puss. Someone may disagree. He trying to get puss, okay? He already got his own place. He trying to live his life, man. He can't just be confined to your house as big as it is. He ain't trying to be confined to your house. With, with with your mama, his baby mama and stuff. Like, she probably ain't giving him no puss. He probably tried, but she ain't giving him no puss. So, he's like, man, I'm, 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 my thing still work. I can I go to DR, get some, some good puss. Okay? Listen, Amar, I, I get it. You, you know, feel some type of way because your mom is uh sick right now. And, you know, he's been helping why you can't because you're trying to get your music thing together. By the end of the day, he's not... Uh, committed to her she ain't committed to him so if he wants to go to the dr listen he don't need to be in your house no way i don't even know why you let him come to your house i didn't know it was that easy to get back into your life amara but you seem like the person who's just easy listen i know he wasn't in your life before but girl not to the point i'm just gonna find a nigga to, to live with me you mu- you put your mama through that's probably why your mama's stressed and eating all over the damn place because she just like she can't deal with that nigga in the house he seemed like he over anyway. So, listen, let him go to the DR. Don't feel no type of way about it. Just the only type, the only way I would understand you feel some type of way is if he goes to the DR and just, just cuts off all communication with you. But, man, let the nigga go and release some sperm and some bitches puss. It's, it's going to be all right, okay? He, you see, he been planning this, you know, ever since he got back on track with his health. You know, he's like, okay. I'm back on track. My my dick probably working. Get, let, let, girl, let him go. We get finally get to Suki, Hana, and Kill Bill in the car. Nice car, by the way. Nice Bentley. Uh, and Bill tells us in his confessional with his big ass uh poofy 
robe thing he got on like you in Miami it's not hot in 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 the confessional with your uh robe jacket coat thing okay he tells us him and Suki haven't been good since the whole meeting situation and he didn't say it but from the way he was talking it seemed like he was a, he felt a little disrespected because Suki checked him at the meeting but not in private but it's like, nigga, you in a meeting trying to act like you you telling us how the things should be. And you didn't tell Suki, like, okay, you're going to try to make sure things are... Like, I don't know. You you want things discussed in private, but you didn't discuss that you was going to be taking over the meeting. I don't know if he had a few things to drink or something. I don't know. Kill Bill, you was, you was getting on our good sides, and now you just doing a little too much. But... Suki's like, she don't mix business with pleasure, or, or not business with pleasure, but business with personal. She don't mix the two because it's like business is business, personal is personal. And I can understand that, but I'm just like, yo, your mama's your manager, though. You, isn't you, didn't you and Tip be, was friends before uh, Tip became your manager previously? I don't know what you and K, K Jelly got going on, but, uh, you know, you kind of mixing business with personal if you think about it, but uh, uh, okay, so we, we're gonna go with what you say. And they get into it, obviously. They get into a little argument. She's just Suki's just like I'm not your little other bitches that you've been used to being with and stuff. Like I'm, you know, I'm that bitch. I'm that bitch. Kill Bill like, man, I don't give a fuck, bro. Like, fuck that. Shut the fuck up. And then Suki's like, excuse you, like, oh, you you can leave. You can get out of my car. And I'm just like, yeah, that, that's, that is a nice building. Like, listen, but the whole time they're going back and forth because that's when she stops the car and then you hear the producers. The producers are so dramatic. I feel like the producers are more dramatic than the cast of the show sometimes. They're like, oh, you know, something's going on. Stop the car. We need, I don't know if they say we, mean, we may need to get, like, reinforcement backup or something. But I'm just like, y'all so dramatic. Shut up. But, like I said, they're going back and forth. Now, this whole time they're going back and forth. I'm not really, I'm listening to what they're saying, but I'm not really listening to what they're saying. I'm just looking, I'm like, dang, this is a nice car. Cause I like Bentley's. So I'm just like, this is a this is all oh, that that interior, that's nice. That's nice. I see Steve Madden bags in the back seat and everything. I'm like, this is nice. This is nice. But anyway, they they arguing and whatnot. And uh she she trying to kick him out. He like, I ain't going nowhere. And I'm like, Kill Bill, please, nigga, you already got a uh ankle bracelet on, you know, you you kinda already like on house arrest and stuff. Like you just just get out of the car now. Just just get out of the car. You're probably already going to get checked from 11 Hip Hop anyway. Just just, just get out of the car. But, um, yeah, I, did, he, did he ever get out of the car? I don't know. Because that, that, that's where the episode ends. Because, you know, because they're not together right now, right? From what I've seen on The Shade Room. I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, they argue. And I'm just like, well, I don't know what to tell you. So... That's where it ends. We're going to see what happens next week. Uh, they're going to go to some marriage counseling or premarital counseling. It seems like Suki's just over him. She said, we ain't no friends or nothing. And he looked he look low-key, genuinely hurt. And I'm just like, I don't know. That's something you guys going to have to figure out between y'all selves. Trina's still going to be getting, uh, she's still going to be having her trash-ass, rookie-ass managers. Uh... We are gonna see Noriega trying to talk about him and his wife having another kid. It's like, nigga, do you even take care of the kids you have now? Okay, maybe financially, but like you, like she said, you're not even taking them to basketball games or nothing. And then your friends talking about you might need to lay off the, on the drinks a little bit. Uh, uh, like she said, you might just want to have her not focus on the juice bar and just focus on you. So Nori, that's trash. I mean, sorry, Nori, that's trash. If that's the case, Nori. Kudos to you for dealing with a nigga like him. I'm just going based off what I see on this show. Not personal. Just based off what I see on the show. But yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys next week for the next episode. And thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye.